Hello, my name is Adam Winrich, and this is a video directed at beginning whip crackers. It's sort of a lesson plan as to uh, what order you should try to learn your whip cracking. There's a lot of single videos out there showing individual whip cracks. Uh, this video uh, kind of goes from crack to crack to crack to give you a progression as to uh, in which order you should try to learn those cracks. Uh, the whip I'm going to be using is a four foot eight inch performance hybrid whip. I'll include some links in the uh, description section that'll let you know where you can buy one of these. Uh, it's a good whip for beginners. A lot of people are using them. I use this particular whip in my shows all the time. All right, so let's do some whip cracking. So uh, the first crack you'll want to learn is the cattleman's crack. Just swing the whip up and bring it down. Notice I'm swinging the whip all the way up so it becomes all the way extended in the air and I bring it down. I'm not doing a lazy lift up and slamming it down because that's how most people whip their ears or their back. After you've learned the cattleman's crack, you'll learn the overhead crack. Notice I keep the whip up and in the overhead plane. From there, I'd recommend learning the reverse cattleman's crack. I swing the whip up to the back, bend my elbow, let the whip get in front, and then just bring my arm down to my hip. I could uh, mention here that some people wonder, how do you make whip cracking look easy? And I'll tell you the secret is to learn how to put just enough energy in the whip to get it all the way extended in the air. That's the minimum amount of energy you'll need to get a nice clean whip crack. So by doing just enough swinging to get the whip all the way extended, I can get a nice easy crack and make it look effortless. And uh, you saw what I just did there, was something called a slow figure eight. So after you've learned the cattleman's crack, the overhead crack, and the reverse cattleman's crack, you can do your first combo, which is the slow figure eight. The whip cracks in front and then behind. And from there, I'd recommend learning the reverse overhead crack, where I'm gonna swing the whip. If I'm right-handed, I'm swinging it in a clockwise motion, and then I'll reverse the direction, boom, and get a crack. Swing and Notice that I'm very keeping the, really keeping the whip horizontal. Then once you learn the reverse overhead crack, you can learn the slow figure eight in the overhead plane. So now we've learned four cracks, the cattleman's crack, reverse cattleman's crack, overhead, and reverse overhead. And then you can practice changing planes going in between vertical and horizontal. Usually I will try to switch up the swing after I do the crack in back. So I'm doing slow figure eight vertically, and then swing around, do it horizontally. And then back to vertical. Uh, another tidbit I'll add in here is uh, some people are wondering like how many times should I be able to get a consistent crack before I feel like I've got a good handle on a specific crack. Uh, something I heard that jugglers will do where they want to be able to do a trick 10 times in a row before they ever put it in a show. So I would say that's a good sort of barometer or a gauge to uh, use to figure out how good you are at a specific crack. Can you do it 10 times in a row? And also with those four basic cracks, I'd like to mention that you can add uh, extra swings and extra body movement pretty easily in between each crack. It's very easy to uh, add a spin or uh, do some turning and traveling. Like that. So if you're a variety artist and you want to be able to add more movement and uh, dynamism, some dynamics to your whip cracking, uh, it's really easy to add spins with those cracks. So that would be the first basic lesson. and. Then after that, I would recommend learning the fast figure eight. Pretty much uh, how I teach the fast figure eight is I start people on the back crack. You go like that. So I'm just gonna have the handle pointed down, my elbow pointed up, lift the whip up, and then bring it down quickly. And so you can see I'm trying to form a little hairpin loop right there by my side. Now once I got a handle on that crack, I'll do a cattleman's crack and then take my time, set it up, and boom, get that back crack. Get that back crack, there we go. So I'll do one, two, one, two. 
and then you can start doing the uh, doing them faster and faster, combining them quicker until you're finally getting a fast figure eight. Once you've learned the fast figure eight, I'd recommend uh, moving on to the volley. Uh, the volley is the whip going back and forth, kind of like a windshield wiper. Basically, my wrist is going to be tracing out a fast figure eight, while my elbow is actually kind of tracing out a little oval. So I'm also going to, so I'm tracing it out, I'm going to go with my wrist down, and then as I come back, my wrist will come up, and then over, and you see my elbow, I got it bent, kind of at the side, and it's just tracing out a little oval. Also, when learning the volley, what I recommend is don't try to just keep it going back and forth and slowly losing control and getting tired. I would recommend starting with a fast figure eight and then just slowly adding uh, a crack or two uh, so you can do maybe say three or four cracks consistently before you try to uh, do a lot of cracks. So start with your fast figure eight and then just add a front crack there. See if you can do one, two, three and stop there. And once you do three cracks, go for another crack in the back. One, two, three, pull. One, two, three, pull. I think that's a better way to work on the volley than to just keep sort of having it go back and forth until it finally uh, hits you in the wrist. Which is kind of disheartening. Uh, that little number I just did there is, did there is a combo called the Queensland Flash. It's a fast figure eight and then ending with a cattleman's crack. All right, so to quickly recap, we've covered uh, the cattleman's crack, the overhead crack, the reverse cattleman's crack, the reverse overhead crack, switching planes with those. We've covered the fast figure eight and the volley. Now there's a lot of other whip cracks out there uh, that you can work on kind of in your uh, learning the volley phase of your whip cracking journey. And you can uh, work on the snake killer also known as the drum roll or the singleton special under the feet like that or the coachman's crack or the victorian cutback like that and uh, also the breakaway hop huh? breakaway that's a good boom 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 one two three crack we will we will rock you it also works for jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Lots of music you can do with your uh, uh, one whip once you've learned a few cracks. So now you've maybe learned a few other cracks. The last set of cracks I'd recommend to start working on, which are probably the most difficult, are the flicks. Uh, flicks generally easier with a longer whip. Of course, can be done with most any whip. Uh, with all the other cracks, I've probably shown you so far, those cracks come from changing the direction of the whip. Like the cattleman's crack, you swing it up one way and you swing it down the other way. With all the flicks, the whip keeps going in the same direction and what gets the crack is a very precise, boom, wrist motion at the end. And it can be very tricky to get. So, uh, a fun way to learn the flicks uh, that uh, I've been doing since I was a kid as I take a, a plastic water bottle, I throw it on the ground, and I just chase it around the yard doing various flicks at the bottle. Um, also, uh, I've spent some time with Chris Barr, uh, a great Australian whip maker, and Chris told me when he started out working cattle, this is how they taught him how to learn the flick. They just said, put that bottle there on the ground, and then if you want to start with the overhand flick, just lift the whip up and boom, throw it at the bottle in an overhand motion kind of like throwing a ball and just keep going and throwing the whip at the bottle and so you can get a crack. And I should mention with the flicks how most of them work is you set the whip up opposite of where you want the crack to happen. Your arm is going to travel straight forward. I'm bending my elbow. Then once my hand is in front and my arm has traveled as far as it can, then boom, my wrist is going to turn over and I will point the handle at where I want the whip to crack. So there's a bunch of different ways to do the flick. This is overhand. Then you side arm. 
Try to hit that bottle there. I'm going to hit the bottle. I kind of hit the bottle. Uh, you can also chase the bottle around doing the underhand flick. Let's see if I can get a good crack there. Yep, there we go. And so chasing the bottle around the yard is a good way to uh, learn the flicks. And here's just a couple combos uh, you can look, use the flicks for once you've gotten good at them. You're going to do a sidearm flick into the overhead crack. Like so. You can also combine the underhand flick with the cattleman's crack to do something called the cow and the calf, also known as the whoosh bang. And let's see, so that's the sidearm, and then you can uh, throw a reverse flick in there. Let's see, let's try to get a good crack there. Just like that. Uh, again, just to recap the order, I'd recommend working on your cattleman's crack, overhead crack, and then the reverses of all those cracks, and then work on the fast figure eight, and then the volley. And while you're building your skills with the volley, work on some of the other single cracks, such as the uh, um, cattleman's crack, or not, not cattleman's crack, the uh, boom, coachman's crack. Um, also, when you're working on those, you can work on the Tasmanian cutback, which I forgot to uh, throw in there, where you crack the whip, boom behind your back. And I got the bottle with it. Let's see if I can, can I hit the, yeah, get that bottle with a Tasmanian cut back. Let me hit it one more time. I'm hitting myself in the back right now. So I can show you guys that nobody does everything perfect all the time. And they say, didn't Yoda say something like that in The Last Jedi? Failure. Failure. Powerful teacher it is. Something like that. Well, anyway, I hope this lesson plan helps you guys out there in YouTube land. My name is Adam Winrich. Thanks for watching.